This video is going to focus on percents and how we use them to compare values. So if we think back to the last video, we were looking at if I want to compare within this one quality, that public institution, how can I compare that sort of growth within there? Well, this next set of formulas, instead of comparing, you know, the public to public growth within the 10 year period, what if I wanted to compare public to, you know, private, that sort of thing. So it's almost like if I'm comparing two values, again, I want to create a baseline from which I can compare and sort of talk about those numbers. And so we have, ta-da, it's math, formulas. But you should take a close look at these. So notice it's absolute difference and relative difference. And it helps if my key has the correct word there. And we're going to just, yeah. difference. Yeah, it should say relative difference, not change. And you might be going, huh. Those sound very familiar. And if I look at the formulas, those look really familiar because they are almost identical to the formulas we just did. You're basically finding the same thing, but you're thinking about it a little differently. It's sort of your thought process behind it that's changed, not the actual like math calculations. Because when we're talking about the absolute difference, we're saying, okay, um, we're in the two values we're comparing, we're gonna typically have a reference point. And yes, the reference point might be the original value you started with, or it could be something like a national average. So I wanna know how much the tuition varies from a national average. So that reference point could be that value, um, you know, and then the value you're comparing it to. So the absolute then is just the straight difference between the two, just like last time signs do matter. Relative difference then is the percent difference between the two. So, uh, and again, it's that same sort of setup where we take that absolute difference and instead of dividing it by, um, you know, the sort of original value, we're dividing it by the reference value, which might be like the national average or something like that. But again, same structure, slightly different wording, but you're basically being asked to do the same thing. And in fact, sometimes you'll see these terms used somewhat interchangeably um, because, you know, when you're talking about comparison um, versus just describing change, you know, sometimes it's hard to know when you're doing one versus the other. And in reality, I'm not sure how much it matters. All right. So we're going to look at a situation and we're going to find some relative differences and absolute differences and then think about what that means. Um, and so in 19 or so 2016, let's get the right year, um, pot tax revenue totaled uh, Two hundred and fifty-six million in Washington, and sixty million in Oregon. In that same year, Colorado brought in two hundred million. If Colorado is the standard, so that's who we're comparing it to. You know, maybe they've had it around the longest. How do the other two states compare? And so, what happens when you're doing an absolute difference is then you're saying, you know, the compare value minus the standard. Okay, so let's start with Washington, and we're gonna do Washington in blue. So for Washington then, uh, that was 256 million. So I'm gonna do 256 minus the 200 from um, Colorado, which would get me a 56. And you might be going, well, what does that mean? Well, Washington made 56 million dollars more than Colorado. That's what that means. That's what an absolute difference means. Now, if I then did the same thing with Oregon, and so let's switch colors here. So we're gonna do a green for Oregon. Um, so for Oregon then, I would have the 60 million minus the 200 as my standard. And this time I would get negative 140. Remember I said signs matter. And so what this is telling me right here is that Colorado made 
140 million less than Colorado. And that's if I just want to sort of compare um, with actual number values. Now, let's say I want to compare in terms of percentages. So we're going to take these values and we're going to find um, the relative difference. So starting with Washington, if I wanted to find the relative difference, I would take that absolute difference and I'm going to divide it by the 200 uh, that Colorado, our standard has, and that would get us around 0 0.28. And so if I turn that into a percent, that would be 28%. And so if I'm describing that in terms of a sentence, I would say, you know, Washington made 28% more revenue in Washington than in Colorado. So like Washington made more and that's the percent more it made. Now, if I do the same thing with Colorado, I would take that negative 140. Notice I pulled the sign again over 200. And that, when divided out, would get me negative 0 0.7 or negative 70%. And so I could describe that as saying, okay, Oregon made 70% less revenue than Colorado in 2016. And granted, remember, the signs carry. Now, does the reverse of that work? So I just said here with that negative 70, that that tells me that Oregon made 70% less than Colorado in 2016. So this is a thing with percents. People often think, okay, if that's true, then can't I just flip the statement? Can I say Colorado's revenue was 70% more than Oregon's? No, you cannot do that. It doesn't work that way. Um, because the reference would have changed. If I wanted to compare Colorado to Oregon, then Oregon now is going to become the standard. And they made 140 million more, but I wouldn't be dividing by 200, I'd be dividing by that 60. And so my percent change would actually be 233%, which is a totally different number. And no, and so the basic is, you know, because the reference values changed. To Oregon, so it would get a totally different percent change. And that's important to keep in mind. So if I wanted to figure this out, just so you know, instead of the negative 140, it would have been the positive 140 absolute change. But instead of dividing by 200, the key difference here is we would have been dividing by the 60 because 60 million is now my reference point, which would get me 233.3%, a totally different number than that 70% we found on the previous problem. And that's one of the things with percents. We, we can't just treat percents like normal everyday values because there's sort of this thing that tells us how much of a hole we have and you know, it's not as straightforward. It's not, it's not a plain number. Now thinking about that, we're gonna look at this next problem. And I put this in with this, and this is one that it doesn't use the absolute or relative formulas, but it's something to think about. So here we're told Jada earns 200% more than Reggie. So what is Jada's income as a percentage of Reggie? You might be going, well, 200, right? And like, no duh, except no, 
Um, and so you almost want to think about it as if I wanted to know how much Jada earned, we're just going to say Jada. I would find that by basically taking um, however much Reggie earns and I would have sort of the 100%. So I'm going to need to give myself, I'm going to take my, actually I'm going to change how I write this. I'm going to take how much Reggie earned and then I'd add, because it's more than 200%, 200% of what Reggie earned. And 200% and as a decimal, 200 over 100 is really two times what Reggie earned. So the reality is, is if you think about this, we're looking at sort of a like this whole amount plus this, plus two times that whole amount, which really means you could think of it as a 100% what he originally owned plus the 200% more, which is a total of 300%. So when Jada earns 200% more than, we need to add in that 100% that's already there to the 200 more and we end up with 300%. So Jada's income is 300% of Reggie's. So Jada, is 300% of Reggie's. And that's sort of in thinking about how percentages are working. Now, if I was thinking multiplicatively, then I would say Jada's is, and 300% is basically three times as large. And that's just turning it into sort of a decimal form as Reggie's. So if I took Reggie's income, times it by three, I would get Jada's, and that would end up being 300 times as large. So it's just sort of thinking about, and I, I feel like the tax problems we've done have sort of built on this a little, um, but this is sort of how we can use percentages to relate things and compare things. Uh, there's a few problems to try. We're going back to that tuition problem again, and then some ones that involve some COVID data, and some comparison between values uh, that you get to try on the next screen and see how you're sort of doing with this topic.